All right, welcome to part two of the intro to the 14 day eFlip challenge. In this video, we're gonna be going over eFlip, the software itself, and then talking a little bit more about what online arbitrage is. To get started, a very basic uh, version of what online arbitrage is, if that's still a new term to you. Retail arbitrage, let's start with that because a lot of you probably are more familiar with that. Retail arbitrage is gonna be when you go to a retail store or a thrift store or something like that, you're gonna be buying a product from a store and then selling it online. Technically, retail arbitrage, you could be selling it to another store as well, but most of the time when people talk about retail arbitrage, they're buying something at a discounted rate from a store and then selling that product online. Online arbitrage, on the other hand, is when you're buying something from an online marketplace and then reselling that for a higher amount, or hopefully for a higher amount, in another online marketplace. The really cool thing about Amazon is that Amazon is so large, they really have two different marketplaces going on at the exact same time. They have a merchant fulfilled market, which is third party sellers actually sending you the items themselves. It's going to take longer for shipping. If you've ever purchased a book on Amazon, you know if you click one of those used offers that doesn't show the Prime logo next to it, it's going to be a lot less money, but it's going to take five, seven, ten days to get to you. So you're willing to pay less to wait a little more time. And then on the other hand, they have the Prime membership, the Prime benefits, which is fulfilled by Amazon, where sellers uh, like myself can send all their inventory to Amazon. And you're willing to pay a little bit of a premium to get that shipped to you in two days directly from Amazon's warehouse. So since there's these two different markets, there's the opportunity to buy and sell between them. So as a very basic example, if someone's selling a book for $40 Prime, uh, and they're selling the lowest merchant offer at $10. It might seem like a big jump, and it is a pretty big difference, but that's not unheard of. That's exactly what we're gonna be looking for with eFlip. You, as the seller, can buy that $10 book. You wait the 10 days for it to show up at your house if it takes that long. You collect all of them together, send those back to Amazon's warehouse, sell at Amazon Prime for $40, and you make that difference. So that's how you can do online arbitrage, Amazon to Amazon, and that's what eFlip is going to do. There are something like 60 plus million uh, ISBNs uh, that, have, that are on Amazon. Technically only 20 something million of those have ever sold a single copy. So a lot of those are useless. So forget about that very large number. Let's take just a simple 20 million number and say 20 million books have sold at least once. That's a lot of books. If you were to go to Amazon, click the best sellers list and click on the first option there, and you were to look at the prime versus merchant fulfilled offers, chances are they're not gonna be much different. Uh, because not every single book fits this criteria. That's why eFlip exists. If you were to try and go to Amazon and just pick and choose which ones you wanted based on typing in a keyword like science book, uh, you're gonna be looking through a lot of books to try and figure out the ones that are good to flip, uh, buying Merchant Fulfilled and selling Prime. So with eFlip, you have the option to search the entire database for the things that fit your exact criteria all at once. We're gonna dive into using the software in a second, but eFlip can let you say, I wanna find books that are $10 or below Merchant Fulfilled that are currently set at $30 or above for the lowest prime offer. You can see all those results, and then you can buy those books from there. So that's how online arbitrage works, specifically Amazon to Amazon, and that's how eFlip is your big advantage. You don't wanna be trying to scroll through 20 million books to see which ones happen to fit your exact criteria. You need to use a software like this to be able to scan it all at once and find the exact books you're looking for. So let's dive into the software. You can find it at eflip.co. If you're just joining this challenge uh, and you're still part of the 14 days, so from July 1st to July 14th of 2019, uh, you have the opportunity to do three months uh, up front for $159, which is a significant discount. Normally that would be around $240. So if you're wanting to jump in, uh, I recommend going for that three month offer. If you're not ready to jump in, you're still just kind of experimenting, feel free to do the 21 uh, day trial eFlip has. You can sign up on the eFlip.co website uh, and you can follow along with the challenge doing that as well. Either way is up to you, but if you want that discount, do that by July 14th uh, to get those three months. All right, let's dive into the software now. All right, one more quick thing to note. In the video you are about to see, I filmed this video when we were originally gonna be calling this the eight week eFlip challenge. It's currently the 14 day eFlip challenge, the eight week challenge does not exist. So if you hear me say that, don't be confused. It's the 14 day eFlip challenge, not the eight week eFlip challenge. Sorry about that, but this video was filmed right before we switched it. So, on to the video. All right, once you've logged in, you should see this page right here. 
Now let's start off with a couple of things at the very top. First, you see this little search icon right here. All this is is a drop down with the same items you see on these tabs right here. Uh, but there is this FAQ button. If you click on this FAQ button, you're gonna get a lot of information uh, kind of that we're talking about right now, all bundled down. So if you have specific questions you wanna know or you hear something in this video and it sparks your interest, go to this FAQ page. It's probably answered here. Why would I source online? How many books from the database? It's fairly recent number, January 2018. The database has grown since then, uh, but still anything under 3 million rank is what's displayed over is not displayed. So that information's right there. How many books can I purchase? Blah, 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 blah. Filtering, uh, how eFlip works, analyzing, all of that good stuff can be found on the FAQ page. Uh, hopefully we'll get your basic questions answered in this video, but if not, check out the FAQ page. The blog button right here will take you to Caleb's blog, thebookflipper.com, which has a lot of articles as well, some on eFlip, some not, so you can find some information there. Or, I recommend this eFlip University button, especially if you're going for the eight-week challenge. Caleb has done a great job breaking down the ways you can use eFlip and how to be successful with it. So go through, binge watch these videos when you have some time. It'll significantly help you uh, finding quality books, and you'll definitely want to check out these videos if you're going to be doing the eight-week challenge, kind of go through here and check those out. But let's go back to the search button and we'll start with this all textbook tab right here and I'll explain to you what these different tabs are, what they mean, and which one we'll be focusing on for the eight week challenge. So the all books tab is what you think it is. It's all books in the eFlip database, again, that are three million sales rank or under. Now the textbook tab up here, if you click it, it'll show the textbook tab. Everything else pretty much looks uh, the same on here. Uh, it actually is the exact same, but these are gonna be books that show some seasonality. So if they have spikes during textbook season, which is August, September, and then January, and then a tiny bit sometimes uh, in May and June for the summer uh, school season, those books that have seasonality will be in this textbook column. Uh, CDs will be CDs. If you're ungated in CDs, you can use eFlip for that as well. Same with DVDs and vinyl, those tabs up there, uh, if you're ungated. But this eight-week challenge, we're going to be focusing on books, which will be found in these first three tabs, except there's this tab right here, the third one in, called Outliers. Now, Outliers um, can basically be thought of as eFlip 2.0. So when eFlip first came out, it was the textbooks, all books, CDs, DVDs, and vinyl. Um, and then a while later, Outliers came. Now, here's how Outliers is kind of a game changer for eFlip and is really the only tab you need to be using for eFlip. These other tabs are there because people liked them, they were using them, and they weren't sure how to use Outliers at first. So those tabs were kept for all books and textbooks, but really the thing you need to be using is Outliers, and I'll show you why. If you look at textbooks, you'll notice the Outliers right here looks a little different than if we go back to this textbook one. The page will adjust here in a second, there we go. So you can see use price, max new price, Amazon price, max trading value. And that is good, but um, it doesn't see the FBA slots versus the merchant fulfilled slots. And that, as you know from our example in the past video, is one of the main ways you can use eFlip, buying low merchant fulfilled, selling high prime. And this is gonna show you the lowest new offer, and then, or not the lowest, the max use price, whatever you put in that slot, and the max new price, Amazon's price, etc. Where if we go to outliers, we'll see something a little bit different here. All right, now we got outliers pulled up. You're gonna see max price number one, minimum and maximum price, this little slider right here. And then we have this drop down, compare price. So let me show you how we can use this. First of all, on the left-hand side here, account type, you wanna put your account type, mine's personal. You can use Amazon Smile to donate more or you can use show rentals if you wanna see rentals in the search results or you don't wanna see rentals. Um, but we're gonna to go to this first uh, little slider right here. And I'm going to say used one. So what this is, is the very first, the lowest used slot Amazon delivers. All right. So we're going to say the lowest used one has a max price, let's say, of $10. So a minimum price of one cent all the way to $10. So the books going to be displayed in this first column are going to be the lowest used offer is $10 or less. All right. Then the second slider right here, I'm going to say FBA one. So this is the lowest FBA price. And I want to say the lowest FBA price is a minimum of, let's say, $30. And then there's no limit to the top of that. So when we hit search, 
We're going to be finding books where the lowest merchant fulfilled offer is $10 or less and the lowest prime offer is $30 or more. So we're getting that bump of whatever that is right there, $20 uh, in there so we can search just by books that fit that criteria. Except we're going to take it a step further um, and I'm going to go over here to eScore and I'm going to change eScore to a max, actually no, I want a minimum, a minimum eScore of... Let's do 12. So eScore, if you're not familiar with it, is days of sales in the past 180 days. So if a book has sold once a day or has a sale recorded each day for the past 180 days, it would have an eScore of 180. Technically eScore shows 151 plus if it sold more than that because it's almost selling every single day. If it sold once a month for the past six months, it would have an eScore of six, sold twice a month, eScore of 12 because it's based on the last 180 days. So by putting a minimum e-score of 12, we can ensure that any books that come up in this result have sold a minimum of about two copies each month for the past six months. So there's sales volume coming. We don't want to find books that don't have any sales. Uh, max rank and minimum rank, uh, we can put that all the way up, no limit, no limit, because e-score is going to be taking care of that. And then max dues offer, doesn't matter to us right here. I do want to change, just as an example, Again, there's different ways we can do these searches, and we'll go over that in the following video. But just as an example, um, max new buy box. We're gonna say the minimum new buy box is forty dollars. We want the new buy box, and minimum Amazon price is forty dollars. We want to make sure Amazon uh, is selling for more over here instead of a higher prime price, and Amazon's undercutting it. You don't want that. So let's hit search and see what comes up with these results. Now, if you've used eFlip before, you will know Outliers takes a second longer to search because the criteria is a little more advanced, but it's still pretty fast. As you can see, it's already there. And then we have all of these books served up that fit that criteria. So we can see this very first one right here. We have the ISBN off the left. Uh, title, we can use this Analyze tool right here. If we hover, hover right here, we can see the Keep a Sales Rank chart pop up. So we can see the sales rank going between... Uh, it drops pretty low sometimes. It'll drop almost it looks like below 100,000 sometimes and it goes up almost to a million and then it drops down. So it's selling pretty consistently as an e-score of 28. The lowest used price right now is $9.26 and the lowest FBA price is $44.91. The new buy box, $40, so it's right around the same. Used buy box, $44, Amazon's price, $40, and sales rank, $61,000 at the moment. So we see this book and then we can get an idea of what the ROI would be if we bought it. So if we bought this $9 book and we wanted to see if we sold this book for $44, what would the ROI be? Would this be a good purchase? We can click on this calculator tool and instead of you having to do the math yourself, everything is done here. So it automatically inserts this lowest used price, $9.62 is the price you would pay, which includes shipping. Uh, it's the landed price, so shipping is going to be included in that. And then you can see right here, for a profit of $2.40, which would be 25%, you'd need to list this book for $22.16. And then it breaks it down as you go up. So we can see here, I want to shoot for 100% ROI, which was my goal for this eight-week challenge. And I want to make a profit of $9.62, which is exactly uh, what we'd be purchasing it for. I need to list this book for a minimum of $30.65. If I list it for around 44, so let's take this $41 offer right here. If I list this book for $41, which is less than the current lowest used price or lowest prime price, uh, I'll make a profit of $19, which would be 200% ROI. So I could pretty confidently buy this book, send it in, and know that even if I don't get this $41 price, let's say the market goes down and I end up having to sell it for $30 instead, so the market takes a $14 drop for Prime, I'm still getting 100% return on my money. It could even get even worse. I could have to sell it for $24.99, which is well below what the current Prime and Amazon price are. I'd still make 50% return on my money. So this is a pretty good bet uh, for a book uh, to sell. So that's how you kind of use these tools right here. You can mess around with these and see the different results that come up. Of course, the more extreme you get, uh, the more bizarre cases you'll find and also the fewer results. So if I were to put a minimum maximum use price of $10 and then a minimum prime price of $150, I'm probably not going to get very many results. And if I do, it's probably some odd um, 
anomaly. So let's see here. $150 minimum FBA price under $10 for immersion fulfilled. I probably won't even get any results, but let's see what happens. Yep, no results found. So that's extreme. No one's going to pay $150 or very few people would ever pay $150 prime when they get the same book for $10. They would, however, as we saw in that last case, pay $40 to get it in two days versus $10 for the lowest merge fulfilled price where they have to wait longer. Okay, so that in a nutshell is how to use eFlip. That's how the software works, the different tabs there. Uh, remember that all text or the all books tab is going to be every book that's in the database for eFlip. Textbook tab, it's going to be books that have seasonality. We'll talk a little bit more about this uh, in the next video when we talk about the exact search criteria you can use for this challenge. Then the outliers tab, the big benefit there is you can pick uh, the lowest prime offer, the lowest merchant filled offer, etc., and go back and forth uh, between those two. So mess around with eFlip, do some searches, uh, have some fun there, check out the FAQ page, like I said, and uh, the training videos. Uh, let's dive into video three. Uh, click the link that's about to pop up for video three for the intro to the 14 day eFlip challenge. Thanks guys.